G'day YouTube, 1MJ here. Well, weekend's upon us, so it's Sunday night here in Australia, probably Sunday morning over in the States. So far, hasn't been too much of a sell-off uh, in the market, a little bit here and there, but Bitcoin in particular, it's really been sort of ranging around that kind of 10,000 500 to 10,000 kind of 700 dollar level uh, it's quickly bouncing off 10,500 when it gets to it but it's rejecting fairly hard off the sort of 10,700 10,800 dollar level at the moment but it means we're really going into a very tight uh, squeeze and we'll have a look at the chart soon but good thing is gas is currently 58 guay but we're going to have a look at a story where hopefully that's going to come way down because even 58 is too much uh, Bitcoin dominance, uh, you know, still below that 60% level and will it go up or down? Uh, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, there is something here though. So ultimate Bitcoin bull, <laughs> sorry, excuse me, ultimate Bitcoin bull case. Trader says 23 factors show a rally is due. So if this is the case, and if you want to come over and have a look at it, I'm not going to go through the whole 23 different factors, but they go through uh, the factors of why they think Bitcoin is going to get in a bull run. If it does, you can see this. This this will change heavily. This will go up significantly uh, if Bitcoin really gets on a bull run. And again, we go through here and it goes through all the things that are currently happening. You know, we've recovered uh, from 10,300 and, you know, we broke down from 12,500. But these all, there's all these different analytics at the moment that are basically, you know, strong for Bitcoin getting ready to go on a bull run. So, you know, if it does, that dominance will definitely change. And look, as I said before, September is traditionally a bad month for Bitcoin in general. But the first September and even sometimes the second September, immediately after a halving, they are generally, you know, if it is a bad September, October, November, December and all the rest of it are positive. So I am expecting that if we don't pick up this month, next month uh, we'll, we'll pick up. But look, it could change, you know, it's not always going to be exactly the same. But if we go by what has happened in past history, chances are this is just a bad September and October, November, December and so, so on are going to be good months. It's not to say we might have one bad month every now and then, but if we are truly in a bull run, which I believe we are, then it should just be upwards from here. And again, that doesn't mean immediately right now and it doesn't mean even the first day of October things are going to be good. It might take till the last part of October for things to kind of improve, but that's what I think. Now, something else I found here. So, Ethereum still not ready for DeFi, say some critics. Uh, it, it's the whole uh, gas fees and things like that. They, they're not ready to scale on all the rest of it. But there's talk that uh, ETH 2.0 uh, is going to come out in around about October, November. So that is very close. And something else that has me really excited. So Synthetics IO, uh, I think it is Uniswap and Chainlink, I think are the first, that they're getting into optimistic roll-ups. So that is a layer two uh, solution uh, that they're gonna roll out and possibly before ETH 2.0 even comes out. Because the first part of T ETH 2.0, uh, it is mainly staking, don't get me wrong, there'll probably be a little bit of scaling in there and all the rest of it, but not a whole lot. Now we can go over here, as you can see on their Twitter feed, it gives you a link to the new Minter. So at the moment, you can hook up uh, and this is lightning fast with very low transaction fees. This is a test net at the moment though. It's not their main net, but there is rewards for coming on here. So this is what I'm going to uh, be using and I'll test it out and trial it and I'll let you know how it goes. We can also go over here and we can have a look and there's a really good article on exactly what's happening. So the first fail of it, of the optimistic roll-ups uh, is gonna be rolled out and there's a couple of different parts to it, but basically, you know, they're getting on the front foot. They're not waiting for ETH 2.0 to do it all because again, ETH 2.0, the first part of it, is more just the staking than anything else. And those layer two solutions, they are out there. It's just, you know, platforms need to adopt them uh, to get them up and going. Maddox doing some, 
Uh, there's a number of other ones. Uh, you know, again, there's uh, ZK rollups and optimistic rollups and things like that. So this is what makes me think Ethereum will be ready very, very shortly. It's not ready at the moment. The transaction fees and transaction times are absolutely horrendous uh, at times. Again, 58 is not too bad. It was up around the you know couple of hundred before for the gas fees. So it has improved a lot with this dip but it's not going to take long. And it even goes on to talk about, uh, I think in this one, or maybe it was another article, the non-fungible tokens are really, really big at the moment, and they're gonna start to clog up uh, the Ethereum network. So we really do need some of these layer two solutions to be brought out as soon as possible, because the ETH 2.0 layer two solutions, they aren't coming for you know some time. We don't know exactly when. ETH 2.0, the staking part, word is sort of October, November. Uh, but the scaling solution of ETH 2.0 itself, it's still a long way away. So I'm really happy about this. And again, synthetics have jumped on it. I believe Uniswap uh, is getting on it. They're not on it yet. And I think Chainlink is also on it. And they're all going to be using the optimistic rollups as well. So last but not least, let's go over and have a look at the chart. And we can see it's just been ranging here. And the last couple of days, we've really been kind of stuck between, again, 10,000 sort of 600, doesn't even get down to the 500 level so much. Well, they're 577-ish, but we also haven't got above 10,000 sort of 800. So this is a tight squeeze at the moment, and obviously something is going to happen soon. I am predicting that we break out to the upside because we've come so close to bouncing off this and we have kind of broke through support and come out. You know, different kind of charts will show different kind of things, but it's all sort of thereabouts. So I am predicting that we're going to bounce upwards, but it could bounce downwards. You know, that's just the way it is in the market. If, you know, if I knew exactly what was going to happen in the market, I'd be mega rich. Uh, and I wouldn't be telling everyone exactly what my thoughts are. <laughs> I'd be keeping it quiet because if everyone was doing what I was doing, then it wouldn't work. I'd have to be, uh, you know, doing the complete opposite of what I was saying. And that's definitely not what I'm about. So I am expecting this to bump to the upside. Now, that doesn't mean it's going to do it tomorrow or the day after. But at some stage, I'm going to be very surprised if we are going to come down and touch this line. Currently at the moment, 10,500, we can see that it's just getting bought up. So this is above 10,500. So it's just getting bought up straight away. And you know, if we go sort of down to 10,000, so 10,000 is actually down here, the, the minute Bitcoin even gets remotely close to here, we can see over here, it was just getting snapped up straight away. It barely even sort of pushed down. And this is just, you know, that new trend line that it's kind of sort of setting. So I do expect that we're gonna break out of this one. Uh, to the upside. I don't think it's going to be a big massive move straight away, but I think it's not going to take us long to get up and cover off on this $12,500 level. And then from there, uh, I think we'll pretty, uh, we'll probably reject from there uh, first, maybe come back down and test sort of, you know, dollars $11,500 $11, level. And then I think we'll actually start to push right up and we'll get up to the $14,000 level because this is roughly the $14,000 level. And then after that, there's very little sort of resistance. You know, I guess, you know, you could say there's a little bit here, but that's really not much. I think we'll get up and test that all time high pretty quick. And, you know, based on what I'm seeing on the charts at the moment, I would say that we'll go into uh, new, uh, new price territory probably by the end of this year, if not early next year. Uh, but at the moment, I really wouldn't be surprised if in December, yep, we break through and we're at that 20000 uh, dollar level uh, and we'll break through it but we'll probably reject off at first and we might even push through it and then reject off and have a fairly hard sell-off uh, come excuse me november with the elections i do see uh, a steep sell-off so um, i'm you know again this is all i guess i don't know but i would say we probably get up to around this fourteen thousand dollar level uh, around sort of November and there'll be a bit of a hard sell-off and we might again come back down and you know test that $11,000 level 11 and a half you know we, we could even go lower I don't know but I think once we get through the elections uh, over in the United States and all of that and you know the fiscal policies are all set in motion I think then we'll start to push our way up I, I you know I really do think this will probably be one of the last times you'll be able to buy Bitcoin in the $10,000 range. Uh, I'm not sure we'll ever see it again. Now, it could be wrong, uh, and maybe the next cycle low 
uh, you know, after this current bull run might come down and, you know, cover off that $9,600 level CME gap. Maybe we don't, you know, again, this is all just my opinion. Uh, I'm not going to, you know, confess to be an expert. Uh, I do like to think I have a fair bit of knowledge when it comes to cryptocurrencies and the markets. I've been in it for a few years now, but by no means am I an expert. And anyone who says that they're an expert and can, you know, tell you exactly what's going to happen with the market, you know, get them to do it regularly. It's, it's easy to pick a one off or a couple of times every now and then. Statistics says if you throw enough guesses out there, eventually a couple will be right. But to pick it regularly, well, then they should be absolute millionaires. And why would they tell you what's going to be going on? So, yeah, just be aware of people, you know, when they, you know, give you their advice and opinion, because that's all it is. It's an opinion first, and then that's why they would consider it advice. It doesn't mean it, that it's going to be right. It has every chance uh, that it could be wrong as well. Well, Sunday night here, I'm going to go and sit down and watch a movie. Stay safe, be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that game train, a little bit of a red day, but anyway, hopefully that'll improve, and I'll see you next time.